there welcome back this is just actually a quick video i've decided to do on the back of some questions i've received regarding the roof on the 206 cc a couple of people have purchased them not because of me obviously that'd be great but no um because they've had them anyway but they've never really been explained when they've bought them how the roof works and a couple of people have said the same thing the roof's worked fine for a while they've gone to use it the next time and it stopped working and they have no idea why um, I've answered some of the questions back and forth and on both occasions, actually three occasions, it turned out that it was just uh, the blind in the boot, which I wasn't explained when I purchased the vehicle. So this is just a quick one to explain uh, how the blind works in the boot, the reasons for the blind and why it's not just a load cover. So to set the scenario, people have come to use the roof, so they've gone through the process as normal. So as you know, there is a latch up here that you need to disengage from the driver's side. There is an identical latch on the passenger side. You need to disengage those. Both of those are done first before you actually activate the switch. The switch is down by the handbrake. In normal circumstances, it's quite simple. You press the switch. But this time, as you can hear, you get crazy noises instead of a roof opening. And that's quite concerning. Now there are multiple things that would cause that if there is a failure but the most common one is actually the blind in the boot, which I'll show you now. So, obviously opening the boot, it's quite cavernous with the roof up, but here you go, we've got the blind in here. Now this, obviously a lot of people think it's just a luggage cover, which is fundamentally, you can see why it separates the boot, the bottom part, we've actually got the ability to put uh, luggage and shopping in, and the top part where obviously the roof needs to sit. Uh, it does say on here that you can't put anything on top of it, and it does say that your luggage goes underneath it. But it doesn't say anywhere on here that it has to be closed. It does in the book, but it doesn't tell you, obviously, unless you've purchased a vehicle from a dealership or the person selling you has explained it, it, uh, it doesn't show up anywhere. So this is basically what you need to do. This has to be closed, and it gets latched either end. There's a little latch that sits in there, just sort of slots in. And the same on the other end, that's got a slot in there. But if you look down inside, there are metallic contacts. And that is where the sensor picks up the fact that it's seated. And only then can you actually open and close the roof. So let me show you. So we begin the process again. So obviously this time, make sure the key is in ignition. Either it needs to be ignition on or the engine needs to be running. So repeat the process again from scratch. Unlatch that one on that side and latch that one that side you get the audible bong noise which is brilliant it means it's done literally back down to the switch again and if you do it this time the windows go down the rear windows go down and hopefully if we're lucky Followed by the bing, the roof is now working. You do the reverse. And the roof is now closed. You then close off the latches on either side over here and you're done simple as that so before you go down the complex route of trying to figure out whether you've got any issues with sensors or the plumbing for the roof or anything like that from a pneumatic point of view just check that load cover is in place if it isn't close it if it is release it put it back again make sure it's seated make sure the contacts are clear and retry thank you for watching you never know that may have helped someone thanks a lot bye bye